All right, crew, let's get her around and talk Alivium. What it is, what phase two actually changes, and why people are making noise about it right now. I'll keep the jargon to a minimum and the story moving, so by the end, you'll know what's special here and where it could go next. Alivium is a layer one blockchain that sticks with proof of work, but with its own twist. Instead of one chain doing all the heavy lifting, Alivium breaks work across multiple shards using a design called Blockflow. Now think of traffic being split across parallel lanes while still letting cars switch lanes in a single hop when they need to. Now cross shard transactions don't get stuck waiting on complicated handshakes. And the project's research describes native sharding and single step cross shard transactions. And the live network today runs four groups with 16 chains handling different routes between those groups. Smart contracts are written in a language called Ralph and executed by a custom virtual machine, which is Alfred. The big idea is a stateful UTXO model, which blends Bitcoin style UTXOs with account style flexibility. I'm plain English. You get the security properties people like about UTXOs while still being able to build apps that keep an update state and you avoid common traps like re-entrancy bugs by design. Now the docs and technical write-ups go into how this helps paralyze activity and reduce whole classes of attacks that have bitten all our chains. Now the proof of work twist, right? Alivium proposes proof of less work. Now the concept is that once the network gets big enough, miners don't need to throw ever more electricity at the problem. A chunk of the mining cost shifts to coin burn in the coinbase. Now the white paper and AMA say the goal is to keep security while cutting energy drop often quoted as around 87% lower than classic proof of works at scale. Now by burning part of the reward when hash rate passes a set threshold. Now that switchover is coded for a very high hash rate and isn't on yet, but the mechanics and rationale are public. On throughput and day-to-day -day use, the project materials claim hundreds of transactions per second on today's setup and room to scale into the tens of thousands by increasing shards. You don't have to juggle different zones or wait for separate confirmations when moving across groups. The network handles it all in one go. Recent upgrades like the Danubi release in July of 2025, which I made a video about as well, so be sure to check it out, focused on faster block times and friendlier onboarding, making the chain feel snappier for regular users. And that's the base story. Now let's talk about phase two, because this is where token economics and core apps are tied directly to usage. Now the team's phase two write-up lays out a few pillars. First, fees from blocks are already burned on Alivium, which links activity to a shrinking supply. Phase two keeps that link and adds protocol owned applications that actually earn fees. And those fees don't just vanish. They're shared with stakers and used for buybacks and more burns. So as people trade and use apps, value loops back into ELF. The flagship here is a core dApp that starts life as a CLMM DEX. Think concentrated liquidity swaps out of the box with a path to an order book and then perps once volumes justify it. It's meant to be open source and set the standard for how apps on Alivium should be built and audited. The point isn't to grab market share for one team, it's to provide a backbone that other builders can plug into with fee streams that flow to the people who stake ELF. Which takes us to staking. Now in phase two, you stake and lock ELF into XELF and holders of XELF share and swap fees from the core dApp that can plug into strategies across the ecosystem, get potential perks and participate in governance. Now the economics are designed so long-term participants are rewarded by actual on-chain activity rather than only inflation. Pair that with the fee burn that already exists on L1, and you get a usage, fees, burn, and rewards loop. And of course, there's also a community angle. The plan mentions more budget and structure for groups focused on growth, builder support, and liquidity. Think DAOs that can steer funds and proposals with stakers voting. Now, over time, that shifts decision away from a single team and toward community run efforts like the Blockflow Alliance. And finally, the chain itself isn't standing still. Phase two includes further performance work like shorter block times where safe, plus UX and dev tool polish to support heavier apps without compromising the proof of work design choices that define Alivium. Now the idea is to keep the base chain fast and simple to use while the fee and staking flywheel spins. Make sure to follow my and their socials and to subscribe to my channel because that way you can assure yourself to be notified on the latest news in regards to 
Alivium and other projects. And if you put the two stories together, you can see why people should care. On one side, you've got a proof of work chain that already shipped native sharding, single step cross shard moves, and a contract model geared to avoid entire clusters of bugs. On the other, you've got a roadmap that ties real app usage to token flows. Fees get burned, protocol owned apps share revenue and staking routes those flows to committed holders. Now if proof of less work later kicks in at high hash rate, miners shoulder more of their cost and burn coins instead of electricity, which further tightens supply without making the network brittle. None of this is a guaranteed success though, but it does mean Alivium isn't just promising speed, it's wiring economic feedback into the chain's daily life. So what would this look like for someone like you who just wants crypto that works, right? You use a wallet, you trade on the native DEX, maybe you stake into XELF. Your activity pays small fees and those fees are destroyed or rerouted back to stakers instead of being skimmed off endlessly. Now as volumes grow, the DEX can graduate to order books and later to perps, but only once the numbers support it. That keeps the roadmap grounded in real demand and not just slides. There are still open questions though. Any plan that shares fees and burns supply relies on actual usage, not just tweets. Liquidity needs to show up. Builders need to pick this stack because the tools and safety models save time and headaches. Now the team has moved the protocol forward with releases like the Nubi and the docs show clear design choices around sharding, SUTXO and proof of less work. Phase two is where those choices meet day-to-day -day apps and cash flows. If that connection lands, Alivium becomes a proof of work chain where performance, safety and economics point the same way. If it doesn't, the tech can be solid and still underused. That's the honest trade-off. Let's wrap it all up in one breath. <gasps> Alivium shipped a shorter proof of work chain with single hop cross shard moves and a contract model built to avoid common exploits. It's now turning that base into a self-reinforcing loop where fees are burned, protocol apps earn and share revenue and staking ties users to the network's growth. That's why phase two is a big deal. It turns a fast chain into a system where day-to-day -day use and long-term holders pull in the same direction. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei.